Hey guys, welcome with a new interview. Beside me is Kevin van der Kooy, aka Rotterdam, who's actually a Dutch guy. And yeah, well, I would like to have you here with the interview and introduce yourself, who you are and what are you doing? Okay, well, hello everyone. Uh, as you said, my name is Kevin van der Kooy, also known as Rotterdam. Um, I think most people know me from Warcraft 3, that's what I played for five or six years. Uh, nowadays I'm playing quite some StarCraft 2, I'm not super good yet, but I'm not horrible either. Somewhere in between and uh, I'm doing some additional casting on the site. And yeah, that's who I am, that's what I'm doing. Tell us a little bit about your gaming career. You, you played more like five or six years of Warcraft 3 and started StarCraft 2. Uh, what did you reach in your uh, Warcraft 3 career? Where did you well, visit. What kind of countries did you visit? All this stuff. Well, it, I would uh, if I would start from the beginning. It's like when I bought the game, which would be somewhere 2002 or 2003. Uh, I didn't even know anything about esports. I never heard about StarCraft before. I, ne I didn't even know what Blizzard was. I bought the game because uh, some shame on you. I know, right? I bought the game because uh, some guys I was playing uh, Nintendo GameCube uh, stuff with. They're like, uh, yeah, we bought this online game. We're playing together. And, and the first day, I actually hated the game. I wanted to bring it back to the store and exchange it for Unreal Tournament. And actually, it's funny when I think about it. I actually went to the store and I wanted to exchange it, but then they didn't have Unreal Tournament. And then I was like, who shall I keep it or not? And I was like, yeah. I'll keep it, and it's funny as well if you see how that turned out. It had a major impact on my uh, how my life went over the last seven years. But yeah, that's when I got the game. I started playing. Uh, I heard about local tournaments in Netherlands in 2004. That's when I first uh, joined. The first real uh, sort of tournament I played was the Aiken 4 qualifier. Um, I placed like top six or something like that. So uh, it was decent for my first tournament. But I, I loved seeing uh, Grubby and Myth back then uh, play from 4K. I was like, wow, these guys are so fast. They're so good. That's so awesome. And I knew that the winner of that qualification. Uh, uh, qualifier would go to China as well. I was like, uh, wow, I'd really like that. And ever since then, I kept practicing. And uh, ironically enough, 2005, I got second at the Aiken 5 qualifier. Uh, but Grubby had to go to ESWC, so he couldn't go. And that was my first major international tournament in China, in the Xeon. Uh, it was a great experience. I mean, I met guys there who are still around. Think about Miu, think about Kiara from Denmark. Uh, I already had so much fun with them back then, even though I was pretty young compared to what I was like 18 years old. But that was a great experience and basically ever since then uh, I kept playing Warcraft actively until 2008 or 2009. Um, I, uh, well, as I said, I traveled a lot. I went to China, I went to Korea, I went to Europe all over the place. Uh, it's, it's been yeah, it's been a really fun ride. For the teams I played, I guess I should answer that. The first pro team I played for was Team Fnatic, and I've been with them for almost uh, two and a half years, and the team closed down. Uh, I was really happy with them. I think Fnatic is a great, solid organization. After that, I joined the Serious Gaming, and uh, I really love Serious Gaming as well. They're great guys, great manager, uh, great team, and yeah, that's where I'm playing Soccer 2 right now. That's nice, yeah, and you're not only playing your casting, uh, you started casting, but also in Warcraft 3 you started uh, to do some decent casts. Where did you cast and for what organizations? Uh, well, I started off actually casting with you, the WC3 Finals, a very prestigious team league for the people who uh, yeah, didn't follow Warcraft 3 back then. That was the first time I did some analyze and then people were like, hey, I, I like it when Rotterdam is casting because, of course, I played the game so much myself that I knew the game pretty well. And they're like, yeah, it's, r it's really fun when he's casting. And ever since that, I kept doing it. So you got me into it. Uh, yeah, the biggest thing, I, things I casted and I think most people know me from are WCG 2008, 2009 and 2010 for Warcraft 3. And I also went to uh, GOMTV in the summer of 2008 and uh, I casted the GOM TV World Invitational together with uh, Johan Mello, Todd, a French player. I think most people saw those guys. I still get so many uh, comments nowadays. Hey, you're Rotterdam from GOM TV? I'm like, yeah, that's me. So, yeah, I think that's uh, the most famous cast I did. We're going uh, to cast in the future. I heard you have some more events coming up for you. Also Warcraft 3, uh, but also beside that, uh, StarCraft 2 for sure. Yeah, definitely. Uh, as, uh, as I probably will go to I-41, where I will cast together uh, with Sean the Apollo, which is going to be really fun. I love uh, Sean. He's a great guy. He's a really funny guy. And I think he's a really good caster as well. So I think uh, him, me, me and him should make a decent team. Uh, but yeah, as you said, Monday I'm leaving actually uh, for the Warcraft tournament, uh, WM in China. So that's where I'm going tomorrow. And after that... Uh, I don't know, I might see it. It's, it's open yet. I, I want to play a lot myself as well. I will never only cast, I will always try to compete on a high level. So I feel much more comfortable when I'm actually uh, casting games that I can really point out mistakes. I mean, everyone can see what's happening and everyone can see why a player wins. But I think as a caster, it's important to understand why a certain strategy didn't work at this moment of the game. But that doesn't mean it was a bad strategy or a wrong decision. That just meant it doesn't work. And if you can explain that to the people, I think that makes you a great caster. But I believe you're only able to do that if you actually play on a high level as well. 
before we play, I talk more about your abilities, uh, the abilities a good caster need. Uh, you're spending a lot of time in into eSport, into gaming, uh, visiting different uh, countries, uh, meeting a lot of people. Um, what what does your does your parents or your family friends uh, in in the Netherlands uh, tell tell you about that? Like do they do they like it? Uh, yeah, my friends, uh, my real life friends, they like it. They they're like, oh, you're out of the country again. And but whenever I'm not, we just hang out. Uh, they're great guys. They're not too much into gaming. I mean, I like to play FIFA with them, and we have lots of fun. You know, mocking each other, like you know what guys do on Friday night, play FIFA before you go somewhere. So that's a lot of fun. But they don't, they're not into what I do at all. Uh, but nevertheless. I think it's cool, and yeah, they, they talk about it sometimes. My parents are very supportive. Uh, I mean, my I have the greatest mom in the world, anyway. But uh, even my dad is really, uh, yeah, he's supportive. He always said that uh, I should do in life what makes me happy, and if this makes me happy, then I should do this. And he will never tell me what to do, which I think is great because I would never tell my children what to do either. Um, so yeah, my brother is uh, a bit more serious than I am, even though he's a. Uh, He's really a crazy party guy, much more than me. But on the other end, he's from a uh, possible, <laughs> very possible. Trust me. <laughs> but uh, no, he's a great guy. But he's um, yeah, he's, he stands differently in life than me. He's doing. He's very serious. He finished university. He's working already for a lot of years. Has his own house. Has a nice car. So that's what he's doing. That's what he's doing. But uh, nevertheless, he thinks it's cool what I do. But he hopes. Uh, I mean, he cares about me. So he hopes that I settle some things in a serious way as well. But other than that, everyone is supportive. Well, good point uh, that your brother was mentioning. Uh, your aims for the future, your personal aims, uh, job, girlfriend. Uh, what about this point? Uh, well, girlfriend. Well, I had a girlfriend for quite some time. Uh, actually, met her in, uh, over, over, not really over esports, but I met her online. Um, but yeah, that I was together with her quite some time. Was a German girl actually, but uh, didn't end very well. And now I feel like uh, <laughs> I'm uh, quite done with girlfriends for a while. Uh, so. I'm so, uh, anyway, I, I'm traveling so much that I think having a girlfriend is pretty uh, shitty. It's like you have to message someone all the time when you're away. Like, oh, I miss you. I miss you too. It's, it's really uh, nonsense anyway. So I think as long as I'm doing this, I don't think a girlfriend is very suitable. But I always say never say never. So uh, yeah, enough about that. But nothing for now. Uh, job, well, it would be really nice to have a job within esports because that's still what I love doing. And um, well, re uh, regarding to the comments I get online, it's the people love me as well, or at least uh, the majority. I mean, you can't have everyone like you, of course, but uh, as long as the people like me, I will try to continue what I'm doing. Uh, yeah, if they won't like it, then I'll quit and I'll try to do something else. I'd like to be a caster, but uh, as I said, never only a caster. And for right now, my aim is definitely to be one of the best. Uh, um, Protoss players in Europe, that's my first aim and after that I will see. I don't even have to win, like I don't want to say like, oh I want to win this 10k tournament or that 10k. I just uh, want to make sure that, uh, yeah, I just want to feel the rush again of competing with the very best like I had in Warcraft 3. Um, that's uh, probably what I'm aiming for. You're a crazy guy, uh, we all know that. Uh, most of the people uh, have seen the show yesterday for example. We had a go-go girl in uh, our show. Uh, well. Most of people were like, when Rotterdam is joining this show, it will be epic. Uh, it went epic, uh, and you were one of the reasons for sure. Um, even a little lap dance for you included. Uh, how do you feel having this role in, in such a show? Well, I think it's fun. I mean, uh, eSport is sort of serious business after all, but it's also, I mean, we all started eSports because it's fun. And uh, it's really fun to cast a serious tournament like WCG to sit on the stage and know that thousands of people are following you at home, or even ten thousands, uh, sometimes even uh, probably even one hundred thousand or something. When it was Warcraft 2 was really big, so that's a lot of fun. And uh, then it's really cool to be serious and dedicated. But on the other hand, it's also fun to have a night like this. You know, just uh, you know what guys do, guy stuff. Uh, the go-go dance is not really something I would have came up with, but <laughs> I think it's uh, it was fun. I mean, I think uh, the people at home had a good laugh. It's not like I would say like, oh, next time we get another one or whatever. But uh, I think it was fun. I mean, uh, it was probably the first time someone ever did that. Like, to, it's good to have, uh, yeah. How do you say that? Uh, uh, a pr primer, uh, uh, I don't know, to be the first in something anyway, so... Primer, yeah. primary. Yeah, something like that. Anyways, uh, so it was fun like that, but it's not something I would do again, but nevertheless, the people uh, enjoyed it, and I had a good night as well, and I think the other guys, Dark Forest and Soccer, made it a good night too. So. <laughs> it was uh, slightly awkward from time to time, but nevertheless, I think it was fun. You're in the spotlight when you're casting, uh, when you're talking about your no when you're, well, bringing the knowledge into the game, into the show. Um, you need some... 
I would say, abilities to be in the spotlight. Because if you are not a good caster, if you're not a nice guy, people don't like you. You won't be in the spotlight. They don't want to see you again. What abilities do you well makes you so so important in the scene? Uh, I don't think I'm so important. I'm just uh, I don't know. I cast some games and some people like it. I don't think I'm like the big star or anything. But uh, I don't know. I just I just tell people what uh, when I'm actually. It doesn't matter if I'm sitting at home and I'm not casting. When I'm watching a game, I'm thinking in my mind like uh, hmm, he should have done this. He should have done that. Perhaps it would have been better if. And that's how I'm sitting at home. And I try to when I'm casting, I try to yeah explore explore those feelings and tell the people why I'm thinking like that. And apparently, uh, yeah, people often agree with me and. Often, of course, I'm at the right side of well because I play so much that it would be weird if I wouldn't know what I'm talking about at all. So I guess, uh, yeah, that's it. And uh, that I'm a nice guy, I don't know. I, I hope so, at least. So yeah. now, but what uh, if you analyze yourself? Yeah. What would you say? What is so well? What is like your good ability and your bad abilities? You mean in uh, life in general? Yeah, I think it's also important for your cast. I think so. Yeah, yeah. Well, I would say that. Uh, uh, to start off with the bad abilities, I'm definitely a bit too lazy and uh, I really want to change that but often when I wake up I get into a, a sort of, yeah, you know, like a morning atmosphere and uh, like, uh, I don't feel like doing anything. But I definitely want to do more sports because I think it's important to uh, be healthy as well. I mean, uh, it's good to have fun on the weekends but it would be really nice if I would exercise a lot more and I'm gonna definitely going to try to do that. I did that for a while, then I stopped again and I think every guy knows that it's so hard once you stop to pick it up again but I really hope I'm going to do that soon so I can change that. Um, uh, good abilities. Oh, I think I'm. A, I don't know. Uh, it's hard to say about myself, but I think I'm a friendly guy. I'm pretty generous, perhaps too generous, which uh, makes it perhaps a bad habit in the end. But uh, yeah, I think that's uh, the main things about me. Okay, thank you for that. The community thing. Uh, you were playing Walker Free for a long time. You have met a lot of people. You you have seen the community growing up and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. Now we have a new community. A lot of new players are included in this community. We we are talking about the Starcraft 2 community. Compared to the Walker community, um, what do you think? Did it is it is the community bigger? Do you like them more? What do you think about these two com communities compared to each other? Well, I think it's pretty similar actually, and I think a lot of the StarCraft 2 community has at least a Warcraft best. I mean, I can see that as well when I'm playing Leather. Like, I was from I was by, uh, from far not like one of the most famous players ever. Of course, anyone who followed the Warcraft scene uh, knew me in Europe because I did quite well for a while. But I wouldn't say like, uh, wow, if you say Warcraft, you say Rotterdam or something. But still, if you see how many people uh, during the beta already, it's like uh, hey, Rotterdam, the orc from Warcraft 3. I'm like, yeah, he's like, oh, I saw this game of you, I remember you. So I think in that way uh, many people have a Warcraft Pass and I think that's why both uh, communities are fairly similar. But what I've seen from the Starcraft 2 community so far is, uh, is that it's really fun. I like the community a lot. Uh, I like the comments on the sites. People are pretty straightforward but I think that's cool. If they don't like something and if they say something sucks then it sucks. And if they uh, appreciate what we do then they say you do a good job. So I think it's cool. Uh, it's hard to say because the game isn't that old yet but I would say so far so good. About the amount of uh, user playing the game, about the community? Uh, well, I think it's uh, it's probably more active right now than I was used to in Warcraft at least, even though Warcraft was uh, really big for a certain moment. Certainly in uh, China, not really in Korea, but in China it was uh, really huge. I still remember some of the events I went to in China. And as I already said, despite not really being the most famous player around, so many people wanted to go on a picture with me and my autographs and stuff. And that, that was really cool. I mean, it's almost, it's almost funny, you know, because it's hard to take serious. Like, uh, what? And like <laughs> in Europe, everyone says like a nerd get outside, and uh, here people want to be on the picture with me. So that was a nice experience, and that community was big. But I, I think this StarCraft 2 has potential to be even bigger. I mean, because of what the people said already, it's both communities combined. So there is a, a bright future, I'd say. By the way, when they think about me in Warcraft 3, they think about the game against Podox where I lost 147 worker in a game against a demon hunter. <laughs> so far about that. <laughs> uh, well, my next question is, uh, what do you think about eSport in, in the next five years? Where are we in five years about not only StarCraft 2, about the whole community, about eSport in general? Do you think, uh, well, we're we going to do the next step, probably have bigger events and all this stuff? 
No, I think, uh, to be honest, I think it's going to be sort of the same. I don't think it's getting worse. I don't think it's getting better either. It's probably going to be somewhere in between. Uh, I think perhaps uh, for our esports, a bad thing might be what the future technology is going to bring. We can see that already with the Xbox Kinect coming up and uh, PlayStation inventing new stuff. And a few days ago, I was watching a, a Dutch show called uh, The Vero Dry Door, and they show like uh, new stuff. And there were like two guys uh, like controlling some helicopters flying over each other and being able to shoot lasers at each other. You know, if that's the future of gaming and it's not really uh, supportive for us but I can already imagine that that's going to be super popular of course because uh, yeah, it's much more fun to actually control uh, a flying, uh, I don't know what it was, UFO or whatever but it's much more control a flying UFO than uh, see something on your screen move so I'm not sure about that I think uh, yeah, I, I hope that won't take over East, uh, PC gaming because I still believe that PC gaming is by far the best way to play. And I really love uh, playing RTS. I hope it never goes away. But I would say in five years, uh, I don't think it's a lot bigger. I think, it's, I think we're sort of on the same level. Thank you, man. That was a nice interview. Um, some shout-outs for, uh, from you, from your side? Uh, well, I'd give... Uh, I always give shout outs to um, uh, Ruslan as a friend for me from uh, Moscow when I went to Aces summer twice in 2006 and 2007. I stayed at his home when I went there for the Warcraft tournament. So uh, I really appreciated that. He's a great guy. Uh, shout out to uh, Bernardo Pato. He's my Brazilian body. I really like him a lot. Uh, shout out to Henrik uh, from Denmark and a shout out to all my, uh, yeah, to all the people who always write uh, nice comments about me. I really appreciate it. Uh, Till the day you'll probably see me. And yeah, a shout out of course to my team and thanks to uh, Sirius Razor for supporting me and sending me to events. And yeah, that's it. Thank you, man. I hope you enjoyed the interview. It was such a nice interview with Rotterdam Kevin van der Kooy. And if you liked the interview, just uh, subscribe my channel, Take TV Takes. And you have some more? Yeah, I have one more. I, I forgot, uh, of course, my British body, the Muslim. Actually, you should have been here with us right here. But, uh, of course, I want to give a big shout out to uh, the Muslim and Patrick as well, Inferno, as a German friend for me, and Sean. And I have so many more, but uh, those are the main guys for now. So I hope it's enough for this time we get some more interviews for sure. I hope you enjoyed it. So tune in.